Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's play some Battle Brothers, shall we? This game has been recommended many times by friends on the channel. I love RPGs, turn-based, tactical strategy games, and this seems to fall right into that camp, although I've never played it, so I'm going to be playing it here for the very first time, and I'm excited to do so. We're going to dive in. I'm just going to start a new campaign and see what Battle Brothers is all about. All right, so um, I'm going to do the tutorial. We're building a company. It says you are second in command in a mercenary company that's been tracking a brigand named Hoggard for some time now. An unexpected turn of events leaves the company in shatters and you in charge to rebuild it to its former glory. All right, so let's do this. Let's get Hoggard and get our glory back. Um, so the company name could be the Battle Brothers, all right? But it could also be, um, could be, you know, complete incompetence. Seems good. And late game crisis, I'm going to do random. I don't know anything about that. And then permanent destruction. Uh, this seems a little bit harsh considering it's my first time. Uh, to do this, so I'm just going to leave everything at the default setting and say, um, let's go. Uh, economic difficulty, again, um, I'll leave everything at beginner for now. I could do Iron Man, which is, uh, disable saving. Oh, it's like makes it a roguelike. Um, and it says recommended for the best experience once you've learned the game if you lose the whole company you just lose the save file wow um that's pretty brutal uh, okay anyway let's go the last battle it all went wrong two days ago the company was hired to track down hoggart the weasel <laughs> and his band of raiders, but it was them who found you first. I mean, the weasel, Hoggart the weasel, that's a tough, that's a tough name. Who, you, like, you'd be angry if that's what everybody called you. An ambush. Some joke about horses cut short by an arrow in the throat. Arrows shooting in from everywhere and nowhere. Men holler and scream a great volume before death. As the hail subsides, you draw your weapon with the rest of the men, only to collapse to your knees. An arrow has punctured your side. You shout in pain. A harried glance sees the men charge without you to make a valiant last stand, met in force as steel clashes with steel. You meet eyes with the captain, a last nod before his throat is cut. You're left in command now of what few men remain. Trembling in pain, you lean on your sword and with all the will you can muster, slowly rise again. Goodness gracious. It's a terrible beginning. All right. Oh, look. Oh, my. That was the captain? Oh, my. It's not going well for the Battle Brothers. Okay. So, presumably this is me. I'm Roderick, or it's Roderick's turn. So I can zoom in and out. Okay, so let's just take a look at what I see here. This is a hex-based strategy game, and your meeples look hilarious. It's like, it's such a funny juxtaposition. It's so brutal. The, the scenario, the blood, everything is gory and, you know, macabre and just death-strewn. And then there are these meeples that look kind of like egg people they don't appear to have arms or legs it's kind of like you you have pawns in you know rim world uh or you know clan folk or, or something where you have these like silly looking people and yet juxtaposed onto a blood strewn battlefield all right roderick what can you do so here's the turn order roderick and then can i select the other person i guess i could but this person's all big oh no, it says acting in one turn, acting in two turns. So this is the order of initiative. Roderick has uh, nine action points. 
Action points are spent for every action, like moving or using a skill. Once all points are spent, the current character's turn ends automatically. Okay. AP are fully refreshed each turn. Good to know. This is fatigue. Um, you, you lose 15 each turn, but if you overexert, looks like this is going to be a problem. Um, this is my morale. It's currently steady, which is impressive. This is the armor that we have on our head. We don't have any. This is our body armor, and this is our hit points. Okay, so it looks like I have uh, the action right now of being able to shoot a bolt with my little crossbow. A quick pull of the trigger to loose a bolt. Must be reloaded after each shot to be able to fire again. All right. So right away, what's interesting to me is that you, the fatigue is a cool mechanic. It kind of reminds me of pushing in uh, hero clicks, although I guess... I haven't played Hero Quicks in 10 years or so, but used to be a mechanic. I think they took that out of the game. Anyway, um, you spend action points and fatigue. Action points restore, but fatigue only reduces by a certain amount. Now, this attack is going to inflict 30 to 50 damage, um, of which 0 to 25 can ignore armor. Look at those swings. Holy moly. That's a lot of variability. Inflicts 18 to 30 damage to armor. Has a range of 6 tiles on even ground. More if shooting downhill. Has a plus 15% chance to hit. Um, and loses 3% of accuracy per tile of distance. And I have 10 bolts. So I'm just going to like see who's this guy. This is a thug. This is another thug. And this is just like dead people. Um, so there's 3 of us and three of them uh let's go ahead i don't know why this guy has a flag uh he's warmed up and he's confident um yep you can see up here there's three of us three of them we're on turn one all right i'm gonna just push one to fire my bolt and i have 57 percent chance here and 36 percent here and can't hit here i got to go for this one it's the closest one and we got him all right so we hit him uh can i make this combat log larger yes i can um all right so sweet there's a cool combat log and it says uh i used the bolt and i i hit i rolled a 45 which i guess it just needs to be under this number um and i hit their armor for 21 damage and broke it and then i hit his body for 17 and his hand has been pierced and his morale has gone from confident to steady which seems good all right now what's my next thing i can reload let's do that this costs what four ap oh it builds up 20 fatigue jeez it's hard to reload this thing um all right and i've got two ap left i should probably move uh, i'm gonna move away i can only move one square okay here's my spear dude Spear guy, what you got? You can thrust a spear. You can per make a spear wall. You can knock people back. And you can do a shield wall. What are these options? Center the camera is shift. Um, oh, okay, that's nice. Uh, raise the camera. There's no elevation, so I don't need to worry about that. Show or hide trees. Oh, okay. Um... Those are block tiles, um, hit point bars. I actually like that. And then retreat from combat. Don't want to retreat. Okay, so I need you to move up. I'd like you to, uh, to attack. Um, now, I can't attack where I'm at, so I need to move a little closer. That's fine. And, oh, it'll take up all my movement to do that. It looks like it's two tiles of movement. But do, do I get reach with a spear? You'd think I would, but it looks like I don't get it. That makes me sad. Um, so it looks like Volkart can't move in to attack because this will take 4 AP. So instead, maybe what I want to do is just um, put up a spear wall. So I'm going to move Volkart like here. Now that won't leave me enough. Let me move here. All right, if I move here, we're good. 
And then I'm going to just do the spear wall. All right. And then Oscar can splint man, round swing, or split shield. Or split man, splint man. How about split a human being? Okay. Um, let's read correctly. Okay. So this will take six AP. So we really can't do much. Like they're too far away. I could try to move here, but as you see, I'd have three left. Um, or I could try to move here and still not have enough to do anything. Um, I'm going to move here. And then I'm going to end the round, I guess. Uh, well, I can end his turn. Good. Here they come. All right, so they dodged my sheared wall. He got to move and attack. Luckily, he missed. Um, Hargit the weasel has retreated. Of course he did. What a weasel. So yeah, he rolled above the chance, which means he missed. Okay. And it's Oscar's turn, which is my axe guy. So axe guy, um, why don't you try to split this guy? Oh my god. Dead. Good job. Move up here, sure. And then, can you... 33% chance. Let's move forward a little bit. What does this take? 3 AP? Um, this will leave me with 5. Yeah. Let's move up. I missed. Okay. And... Um, I can move here and attack, so I will. I missed. He's coming for me. He missed, thankfully. Ouch. He got a hit on me. All right. Uh, I need to reload. And I want to shoot, but I might actually move forward one more square to g give myself a little accuracy. Oh, 6% chance. Maybe my guy was blocking me. Wow, that, that was bad. I didn't do a good job there. All right. I can move up. I can't do anything it, with him. Um, but at the same time, what was that? Oh, he's wavering. He, like, got freaked out because there's two of us adjacent to him is what I think is happening. Right, I'm going to push F. And um, Volkart, I need you to just spear this guy. And we hit him in the shield for one damage. Um, Try to hit him again. Oh, you really hit him. He tried to hit us. He missed. All right. Let me reload. And then I need to move to a place where my own person isn't in the way. Because um, you can see uh, he's armed with a shield. Distance of three and line of fire blocked. And there's like a... It's kind of hard to see. Just getting used to the, the graphics. But there, I'm being blocked by both of these people. So if I move instead to like here... I won't be able to shoot if I do that. Um, but if I move here... Uh, I'm still having my line of fire blocked. And I don't know if there's friendly fire. We'll find out. Oh, we hit him, at least. All right. Go ahead and try to split this guy's shield. Did you break it? Yeah, we destroyed his shield. You can see it's gone um, from him, which is great. And then let me just end the turn and go to the spear dude. Spear guy. Oh, look at that. So... Uh, his his hood has been almost destroyed, and his head is was hit right there. And oof, he's so close to being dead. Oh, he hit us! Ow! He hit my um, Gambison for thirty two. This is a really interesting game. So it's like it must be random what part of the body you hit, whether it's head or body, and then the armor in that slot absorbs whatever it can and then it can get broken and you know there's morale there's fatigue this is a really complicated tactical rpg but i like it all right so let's see let's go ahead and hit him with the axe yeah we win we chopped his head off fantastic so here's the experience that we get now i wonder if the experience is um pro rated like did oscar get more because he killed somebody 
Um, I think so. Like, I don't think they got equal distribution of experience, which is fine. Um, the enemy was destroyed. What did we get as our loot? Uh, we found a bludgeon. And we have some bandages and some food. All right. So uh, we're going to take all the items. And we're going to leave. The aftermath. You're alive. You won. The adrenaline fades in and in its wake, you can't help but sink back to the ground. Gritting your teeth, you snap the arrow shaft. Your chest heaves, pain for breath. Everything blurs. The company has been devastated, cut down to but a few men. And that bastard Hoggart did justice to his name. Yep, weaseled away, fleeing like the weasel that he is. Indeed. What now, Captain? A voice says from behind. It's Oscar, who sits down beside you, betting his bloodied axe on his legs. You turn to him to reply, but before you can answer, he continues. Bernhard's dead. They slit his throat. He was a good man and a damn good leader. But all it took was one mistake. That makes you the one in charge now, don't it? Roderick joins the two of you, still breathing heavily, then Volkart. Oh. I thought I was Roderick. So I'm the person giving the orders, but I'm like an omniscient outside observer. Interesting. Save the ceremony and anointments for another day. Let's give the men a good burial and return to Bitterfield to collect our pay. The weasel's men are slain, after all. Besides, Captain, we ought to see what that wound uh, to that wound before we lose you, too. Wouldn't want to leave Roderick in charge, right? So be it. All right. So the complete incompetence, we need to return to Bitterfield to get paid. All right, where's Bitterfield? It's over here. Cool, so there's like an overworld map. All right, so let's just take a gander. We've got crowns. Uh, we have to pay our company 45 crowns per day, and we have 55 days of pay. Let's keep that information secret from the complete incompetence. Don't tell them. Um, this is how much food we've got. The average man requires two provisions per day and more on difficult terrain. Your men will eat the provisions closest to expiring first. Very wise. Running out of provisions will lower morale and will eventually lead to your people deserting you before dying of starvation. So we use six per day, and this will give us eight days of food. Yikes. We have supplies um, that are in this. They're required to keep our equipment in good condition. One point is required to repair 15 points of item condition. Running out of supplies may result in weapons breaking in combat and will leave your armor damaged and useless. Repairing all your equipment will take 11 hours and require 5 tools and supplies. You can carry 200 units at most. Okay. I wonder if I should do that right now. and then, Or maybe I can do it in town. Ammunition. Assorted arrows, bolts, and throwing weapons used to automatically refill quivers after battle. Replacing one arrow or bolt will take up one point of ammunition. Replacing one shot of a handgun will take up two. And a throwing weapon or a charge of a fire lance takes three. Running out of ammunition will leave your quivers empty and your people with nothing to shoot. You could carry no more than 500 at a time. Medical supplies. Medical supplies consist of bandages, herbs, salves, and the like, and are used to heal the more severe injuries sustained by your men in battle. One point of medical supplies is required each day for in every injury to improve and ultimately heal. Lost hit points heal on their own. Running out of medical supplies will leave your men unable to recover from severe injuries. You can carry 150 at most. Okay. So... Uh, it, I guess it's day one. It's daytime. I got three out of 20 people. Um, I can center the camera. I can lock the camera. I can track footprints. I can make up camp. I can see an obituary. I can show factions and relations. All right. So I'm going to move the camera around with the arrow keys. And I'm going to like try to go to Bitterfield. And I'm clicking on it. 
Um, but I don't know how possible that is. I right clicked on it. Let me unpause it and just click on it. Okay, so I'm moving. Looks like I'm going to have to cut through the trees. This might not be wise, but I'm doing it. Now, I can't tell. Um, I'm sure there's a way to, like, see the terrain type. Is this taking more provisions to move through the forest? I certainly seem to be moving slower anyway. Anyway, I'm just going to keep going. The return to Bitterfield. What a sorry display it must be for the onlookers as you arrive at Bitterfield. That's so funny. Oh my god, they're hideous. Four bloodied and beaten mercenaries down to their on their luck. The men who hired the company days ago, Hilmar the Elder, no doubt expected you to return in a more glorious fashion. Sorry, Hilmar. We're still glorious. Still, he welcome you, welcomes you to his house and offers bread and wine while a servant fetches a healer. Few words are exchanged except for the occasional grunt and wheeze as an elderly man with shaky hands tends to your wounds. That's the town healer for you. A pin pierces your skin, the first of many stitches to come. You grit your teeth till you think you hear one break. Whoa, I need my teeth. Hilmar, the elder, sits beside you and asks if you took care of Hoggart. You shake your head. We killed his men, but the weasel eluded our blades. In the end, that's how he rolls. The healer waves around a glowing fire poke, suggesting he wants to push it into your wound. You nod, and he does so. It's completely unnecessary, and only fuels to increase the healer's morale, who is a sadist. No, I'm just joking. It helps me. It helps fight infection. For a moment, that's all there is. You're not a man, but a pinch of fire. Flesh from flame, a golem of pain. Some of the language in this game is confusing. Um, it don't sound good. Hilmar the Elder hands you a gobble of wine. Drink this, son. It'll make the fire poke not feel so bad. It doesn't do that. You did well, Sellsword. The brigands have been removed, though it's a shame that Hoggart still lives. We expect to get paid for this. Hilmar the Elder gasps. Well, naturally, 400 crowns, as we agreed on. Although, the medical fees, the wine fees, the Hilmar fees, you understand how it is. 25 crowns are left. He gestures toward a servant who rushes to your side with the pay in hand. I wonder, may I make use of your services one more time? Of course, we're the best band of complete incompetence you've ever seen. I'd very much like to end the headache that is Hoggart once and for all, and I'd pay you again, of course. Another 400 crowns, shall we say. Oscar scoffs and turns to drink more wine, but Volkhart stands to speak. Yes. The company is in ruin, but we will rebuild it. Without the complete incompetence, <laughs> Oscar would drink the crowns away and end up begging on the streets. And Roderick, by the gods we all know, he'd go chasing the womenfolk until one stove his rotted head in. Oh my. We need the complete incompetence. It's all we have. What say you, Captain? Boy. Like I said, the writing is hilarious. It's like, look, this is all we've got is this man group that we're in. If we didn't have the complete incompetence, this band that was nearly wiped out in the last battle, one of us would just become a destitute alcoholic and the other would be killed by a woman uh, that he was trying to pursue. Please save our lives. They're, they're laying on the guilt pretty thick. Oscar burps and raises his cup to you. Roderick playfully thumbs his nose and nods. Kill that bastard Hoggard or not, it's up to you, Captain. We've got unfinished business with the weasel. Hilmar the Elder clasps his hands in satisfaction. Excellent. My little birds will need some time to find where Hoggard is hiding. His hide now, that's clever. Um, in the meantime, I suggest you see about stocking up on supplies so that you'll be good and ready to end this when the time comes. I shall see you in a few days' time at the latest. 
As you leave Hilmar the Elder's house and stand on the outskirts of Bitterfield, Volkart seeks a word with you. We need more men, Captain. I know I gave a big speech back there, but bravado won't do nothing. We need more warm bodies in the ranks. Figure we find three good men, buy them some decent weapons, and dress them in the best armor we can afford. The man pauses to glance around. I bet this bodunk town's got a desperate peasant or two looking for a new life. Or we could travel to Forstland in the southwest. Forstland. Them city folk aren't always as hardy as these country bumpkins, but we're more likely to find men with fighting experience stopping to rest there. I love this. This game is so funny. It's great. It's just like, all right, we're looking for some peasant down on his luck, so desperate that he's willing to risk his life in battle for a few measly crowns and potentially avoid a life of uh, complete alcoholic vagrancy or being murdered, chasing down women. What do you think? That's what we shall do. All right, we're in Bitterfield, a small farming village living mostly off the surrounding fertile lands. It's got a marketplace. It offers all sorts of goods common in the region. New wares will be on offer every few days and when trading caravans reach the settlement. Let's hire. Look at this group down here. God, they look great. Hire new men from your mercenary company. The quality and quantity of volunteers depends on the size and type of settlement, as well as your reputation. Every few days, new people will arrive and others will travel on. Let's see what you got. Heck yeah. Leinhard. Having learned no craft, Leinhard is known as a day tailor, someone to ask whenever an extra hand is needed. There was little work to be had these past weeks, so a traveling mercenary company seemed a good opportunity to get him to the next village while filling his pockets. This guy's like, look, I'll do anything. Anything. <laughs> All right. So um, what's tryout mean? Give him a proper tryout to reveal any hidden traits or we can hire him. Um, he costs seven per day. The daily wage will be paid every single day as payment for serving under your command. It's increased automatically. Um, wait a minute, Missy, just by a cumulative 10% per level until 11th and then 3% afterwards. Wow. Um, tryout fee. So we can pay him 37 to see what his traits are. Or just bring him on board. Look at this guy. Uh, he has no weapon, by the way. He's got nothing. This dude, like, has a club, it looks like. Rolo's got a knife and Heimran's really expensive. I don't know if this is because I'm assuming he's higher level. If he costs more per day, that must be it. All right. How much cash do I have? I actually have a lot of money. So I'm going to do the dumb thing, okay? I'm going to hire everybody. Do it. They said only hire three. I'm hiring four. I expect somebody to die. I'm not going to tell which one that I expect to die, but I expect death. All right. So we have some food and we have one weapon that we can give the guy that doesn't have a weapon. Let's see. Um, they have some terrible armor that we can put on. It's like in just an absolutely destitute state of repair, but that's okay. Better than running naked. <laughs> that sounds good. All right, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to buy a lot of this stuff. I'm going to buy a hat. Buy it, buy it, buy that. Buy that one. Buy that one. Buy that hood. Heck yeah. All right, now let's go look at our people. Let's look at the roster. All right, Linehard. Okay, I can, I can change their name, okay? So what I'm going to do for the company is... Um, I'm going to use the name of uh, channel members and patrons, things like that, people who are supporting the channel. Uh, and if that runs out, I'll go further, um, take people in the comments section.
but it looks like I can only have 20. So I'm going to do my best and just put people in here. If you want to be in this, just put a comment below and I'll try to fit you in. I make no promises about your safety if I put you in the game because anything can happen, it looks like, in this title, but we're going to run with it. All right, so I've taken the liberty of just kind of like picking some members and patrons and just putting the names into these uh, folk. So we've got Saxon here who is wearing a linen tunic already. So maybe I didn't need to buy all these tunics, but they could be good as backups. Now we're going to give um, this weapon here to Saxon. And look at this information. I mean, like this is their skill with melee weapons, ranged weapons. Um, wow, what a cool game. There's so much going on. There's Resolve initiative vision chance to hit the head nice i have a hundred percent chance to smash your head all right uh, i'm gonna give a uh, hat to saxon well let's give nice stuff i guess good okay and then let's go over to terror kittens the miller and terror kittens you get a hat right click equip stuff apparently your, this has 20 durability. Um, this is vaguely better, so you can have that. Uh, you need a hat. You're good. Um, you've got some armor. Okay, and I can actually repair stuff, so... Looks like we could buy some better weapons. Um... No, I want to repair, but I'm also low on health, so I need to, like, just spend time healing my people. Okay, so I foolishly brought some armor that I might not need, but maybe we'll need it later, all right? Um, and let's see, what is it going to take to... Um, I have... No, let's buy some shields, I suppose. And let's try to get, like, one more person using a bow. Like, I don't have enough ranged people. Okay. That's good. So let's go here, and let's just say, like... Um, anybody good with ranged that doesn't have a ranged weapon? Yeah. Jack, Jack Meadows is good. So I'm going to give him the bow instead. Um, so he can shoot stuff. So we got two ranged people we got some people with knives and the like um 15 to 25 damage this is the same knife good all right can you use a uh shield this does hurt your maximum shield to have a heavier weapon on but it just gives you a little bit of defense which seems pretty sweet all right so now we got shields on people uh some armor equipped good Okay, uh, let's see. Let's go back from the marketplace. And can I just, like, how do I? Looks like all I do is buy and sell. There's no, like, there's not, like, a blacksmith here or anything like that. So I'll leave the town. Um, I'm going to save the game, I guess. Yeah, save it. Um, okay, um, and then from here... What if I want to, like, repair stuff? How do I do that? Camp. Oh. Well, or I, it's, like, I could just maybe pass time in Bitterfield? Well, yeah, maybe not. Maybe I just need it. Can I camp, like, in Bitterfield? There goes the caravan. I'm eating food. I just want to see if my stuff is, like... People are not healing okay that's not happening all right so i was camping and i just realized because i was being moronical um for some reason i thought this was their health bar but it's their experience so actually everybody is full on health now as far as their equipment from being damaged it also looks like it has repaired itself i don't see um anything exhibiting like this was damaged so i think we did fix everything by camping and now they want us to visit the south. Uh, so we'll go ahead and just go to Force Land and see what goes down over here. I probably wasted more food, you know, than I needed to uh, doing this, but it's fine. Supply caravan. 
Um, as Forest Land's skyline appears on the horizon, John Palb seeks a word with you. Never been to Forest Land before, but I've been around ones that look a lot like it. Cities like these are great for selling goods as all these prissy, pompous pricks love to have their goods delivered. With so many merchants, you can find almost everything you need too. Keep an eye out for bargains. Don't get swindled by them cutthroat merchants. Alex sees fit to add his own opinion of what you should do. If there's a good tavern, I say that's where we should go first. Nothing helps a man down in his luck more than a good pint. Gods know we've earned it. John shakes his head. You say that every time we stop into town. You say that even when you're already drunk. Oh boy. I'll keep it in mind. Alright. So, um, we've gone down here. Now we can actually return, um, to Hilmar, but I do want to go check out the town. A prospering city with its main produce being valuable timber and venison. So this place has a Fletcher, a tavern, a training hall, um, and a temple. Uh, there's also contracts that we could get, but we have one from the Elder that we can hire people here. Okay, cool. Um, so what does this marketplace sell anything different? They sell a lot of food. We only have two more days of food, so I should probably buy uh, something for people to eat. So I could get some cheese, um, and this will give us four more days. All right, so I doubled our food. And how many arrows do we have right now? 77, that should be fine. They sell tools and supplies to repair with. They sell medical supplies. I'm already getting, like, dangerously low on my, my, my money. I don't want to spend too much more. I'm okay with where I'm at now, then. So we need to return to Hilmar the Elder in Bitterfield and hopefully get in some fights so we can start making some money because we're kind of we're low. Even if he gives us 400 crowns, we're, we're running a little low. I might have recruited too many people, but there's nothing wrong with Saxon... Terror Kittens, Jack Meadows, Hella, Alex, John, and Phil. This is a crew. We've got variety. And we could go to the tavern to get the original people's morale up. But I think we're good. And everyone, I think this is a first, a good first episode. Like This is a good first look at the game. And I can't wait to try more. And I'm very curious to know what everyone thinks of this. Have you played it before? Do you recommend it? Um, do you have any tips and tricks that are non-spoilery for the game? Um, anything like that would be fantastic, uh, as I look forward to getting into more of this, and we'll do that next time. Everyone, thank you so much for watching. Take care.